Hello, my name is Michael Stefan and I want to show you a little bit about the system architect today, about some tricks and hints to configure primary servers and internal storage. So let's start with the basics. So here on the left side we see in the green folder our configurable systems. That would be for example our primary servers down here or we have the live books and the Celsius workstations over here. These are the configurable systems so that means you choose the base unit and then configure every part of them. In the blue folder we have the main systems consist of for example the value for you units. These are normally not configurable anymore. In the yellow folder we here have the upgrade components, so components for end-of-life products that we do not sell anymore but that where upgrade parts like RAID controllers or main memory are still available. So we will now start to configure two primary RX 300 servers and one Eternus DX80. And to do this best would be to start with a rack because this is a typical rack configuration and it's best to con uh, start with a rack then. Here we now choose a 12 8 units rack because a 12 unit rack for this configuration is absolutely sufficient. So we just take the rack from the left side onto the right side. We drag it to the right side into the main window where we can configure this. A simple double click on the system or on the rack gives us more configuration possibilities and we now can choose which server to drag into the rack. Here we choose now a standard RX 300S6 12 HDD version. We just simply drag it into the rack and place it where we want to have it. So we can see that we can shift the rack server in the rack where we really want it. So the factory then knows where to, to put the rack server into the rack when we build it in our factory. With a double click on the server we can then configure the server itself. So what we first should do, if we know it, we can set a filter for an operating system. So this gives us the possibility or um, shows us which components are released for this um, operating system and which are not. For example, if I now choose, for example, Windows 2008 server, all the components that are not released for this operating system would be grayed out. In this case there are more or less no parts that are grayed out but if I choose for example an another operating system like Debian we will see for example all the fiber channel controllers are grayed out. This doesn't necessarily have to mean that they are not released but they could be released on special or project release only. So we will now go on. We will take Windows 2008 as operating system and then we will configure CPU f um, at first. You see here all the CPUs are yeah, with a yellow background. So a yellow background in the system architect means that these parts have to be configured. It's a must. So we now choose two standard Intel Xeon processors. We can then go on to the next step to the memory configuration and for yeah, this configuration we will take the performance mode and 2 times 12 gigabyte. So yeah, we already configured the RAM. So now would be a normal DVD drive for example or the Blu-ray but we will just stick to the normal DVD RV drive 
and then we come to the hard disks we will here see the hard disk as we have a configuration later on with the DX80 I think yeah two hard disks will be enough for the whole system so that we can boot for example the operating system and then yeah can get yeah, virtual machines than from the DX80 for example. So for the hard disk we normally need a RAID controller. We will now take the RAID 5 or 6 controller so we can then later on easily take more disks into the configuration if the customer wants it. We can also choose a RAID controller BBU, the battery backup unit which is yeah, a good add-on for this configuration. Yeah, so um, what we have now is more or less um, sufficient for the system. We will configure the um, fiber channel controller for the DX80 later on. Now we just have to choose the rack mount kit. We have a full or partial rack mount kit and normally the customer really wants a full a rack mount kit. And then the cable management for our racks should be taken too. So this would be the initial configuration for the DX80. There are still some things to do. But now I want to configure the DX80. So we will then go to storage and there we see the DX80 for example. Yeah. And we just take a normal DX80 with two fiber channel controllers for gigabyte and then put it down here and we can configure it. So here we have the hard disks. We will take 10 300 gigabyte hard disks and yeah we do not need the solid state disks for example. So okay the DX80 would be ready now, um, but we still have only one ARC 300S6. So what we do now is just a simple copy and paste. We have to give it a new name. If you don't um, want to use a, a specific name, then the system architect um, normally names it with additional numbers here it would be the number one. Okay, we can put it where we want it in the rack. I take it here and now we have two ARX 300S6 in this rack. We have a DX80 in this rack but um, they still have no connections. So what would be best now is a configuration where we can put the D DX80 together with the RX300. How to do this? So we just go to the connection wizard, would be this button here, and then we can choose what we want to configure. So down here we see the Primergy RX300 S6, and up here we have the DX80 with the two controllers. So as you see now, we do not have any fiber channel controller in the RX 300S6. Um, yeah, uh, may be that we do not know exactly what the customer want to take, or I'm not sure um, which controller to take. Hey, we can do this based on the system architect. So, for example, we take here. This is a fiber channel connector coming out of the DX80 and when then we together with a um, control button we can um, then choose what to configure. So here we have the a fiber channel connector coming out of the Eternus DX80. We just click on it so it's then with a black background we um, push the shift button and we 
do a normal a simple click on the Primergy RX 300 S6 we still hold on the shift button we make a right click and then we choose connect and then after some seconds the system architect will come up with a yeah uh, with a valid configuration or with a proposal which fiber channel controller we could take for example so here you see the list of fiber channels fiber channel controllers that would be released for such a configuration we can now choose the fiber ch channel controller down here for example would be a dual ca uh, channel fiber channel controller with yeah 8 gigabit per second so we can choose the, the controller now and then we also can choose the right cable so this automatically gives a valid configuration inside the system architect it's really as simple as shown so once again we take a click on the fiber channel port that we want to connect and the server do not forget the shift button and then we can connect the whole thing once again for the second Primergy RX 300 S6 and after a few seconds the valid configurations come up which is a controller the cable and the whole configuration from the fiber channel controllers is configured and valid so what we can do now is to add a console so the KVM infrastructure and the console inside the rack this would be with this button so we first choose the right console switch and rack console so here we have the right rack console we put it up here and then we can cable the whole chassis with a console connection ah we still have to configure the KVM switch so I will take this one and put it right here and then the cabling should be done so we see here that we now have added two console switch adapters and we yeah have the full rack cabled with a console switch we can also see it here here you see that we added these connections for the KVM switch so now we would have to do the power connectors we have here the button for the power wizard the current wizard so we can now choose which um, yeah which connections we want to have a for the rack service from the power side on so for the first uh, generation it would be uh, the best if you do a full generation and all power supply components will be deleted so we start with this and so the power system generates now the connections so it says successfully completed power connection for this rack and here we also see the settings that were used you can also always change uh, the settings um, if you want to and so now two power dis um, distribution units were added and all the servers should be cabled for now we can see it here we now have the power connections here and here and here for example down here so everything is ready now so we have a configuration but we still should see whether 
we have configured everything but because you can also you can always forget something for example and then we now check all oh so it says now that we still have some warnings so for example in the rec our yeah, rec console should be positioned between slot number 19 and 25 um, this can be a bit difficult in a 12 head units rec unit so I would say we just leave it where it is now but we still have some um, other warnings for example so we have the warranty checker for example I will now configure this one so it's a simple uh, click and then we can choose what we want so you can choose for every part that you want or that you have configured you can choose your warranties so for example the duration of the warranty the service type whether it is um, on-site or bring in for example um, the response and recovery time service times service provider the country is normally uh, chosen by your system architect for example and the price if you do not want to use a specific warranty or a special warranty you can also go to standard warranty and apply this or if you want every uh, part in your configuration uh, with a standard warranty you can just push the confirm button and then everything is on standard warranty yeah let's see we still have some warranties so we take the standard warranty here and also then for the Eternis for example So we chose now the standard warranty. Do we still have any things? Yeah. We have the current checker and another warning for the warranty. So here we will go also on standard. Okay. Let's see the current checker, what it says okay so we have no real power data available for the component Eternis the rec console and the console switch um, this is not really necessary um, we could see for example our power calculator so here we see our components that are inside the rack so we have the exact power configurations for the two servers here and we do not have it exactly for the DX80 or the rec console for example yeah but um, this would be um, the screencast for now I hope you enjoyed it and it gives you a little bit of hints how to use a system architect the um, current assistance the service assistant and also the cabling assistant so if you have any more questions feel free to ask us bye